Hello everybody, welcome back to the video, and today I'm going to be looking at every movie I watched from 2023. Now, I want to say this, this is not movies from 2023 I watched, because while there are some of those, these are movies I watched for the first time in 2023. Movies that were released last year that I saw this year, like Oppenheimer, um, will not be discussed in this video. Also, first time watching. That way we're not getting into stuff like Die Hard, Elf, which I see every year. So without further ado, let's just get into this. We got a lot of these to get through. My calculation is, well, on here I've got written down 60. We've got 60 to get through, so let's get into this. So first is Final Destination 3. It's a good movie. Basically memorable for having a little uh, revenge plot in it, a little B-plot. It, it's okay. It's probably... Eh, it's okay. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. It's a good movie. Uh, Final Destination 4, or The Final Destination. Um, look, here's the thing. When it comes to The Final Destination movies, 2 is probably my favorite one. But 4 has some interesting stuff. It has... The um, most ridiculous kill of the series, I think it's safe to say. Uh, I'm just going to say pool. And if you have seen the movie, then you know what I'm referring to. The kills being a little bit more memorable in 4 are going to make me give it a 7.4 out of 10. Okay. Third one. X2, X-Men United. Now, okay. I will be honest here. I think this movie is a little overrated. I mean, let's talk about the highlights quickly. Hugh Jackman, Ian McKellen, Patrick Stewart. All incredible, just like they were in the first movie. But they're the main highlights. Then, okay, sorry. Uh, X2. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. This movie is insane. Um, yeah, this movie is absolutely ridiculous. The This movie is just out there. I don't really know how to describe it. I'm going to give an, I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. Okay, the fifth one, X-Men the Last Stand. Now, okay, I actually do like X-Men the Last Stand. More than most other people. It's actually, I will admit, I was thinking, why are people so crazy about this franchise after the first two? I actually really enjoy The Last Stand. Is there things that don't work about the movie? Yeah. But, I mean, I, I actually really think the best part of the movie is Ian McKellen. Especially his fate. As he gets his power stand away, that is... For Magneto in this trilogy, that is a fate worse than death for him. Which honestly is a really interesting ending. Okay. Now, sixth, Final Destination 5. This is, I think, the second best Final Destination movie. It's a really good one. And it's got an interesting concept, which is basically if someone in the premonition kills someone outside of the premonition, then they get the number of years they have left, or whatever amount of time they have left. It's a cool idea. I kind of want to see it show up in the next one, because that's just going to add such an interesting twist to it. Uh, but, I mean, the main thing, if you've seen this movie, you know the main thing. I'm not going to say what it is, but there is a huge plot twist in this movie, which is just, I was, I was shocked when I saw this movie for the first time. That was a really surprising plot twist. Okay, next up, Fast and Furious 6. <laughs> That's a little bit of a change. Final Destination to Fast and Furious. <laughs> okay, this is a fun movie. This is this is a good one. I do like this one. Uh, oh, wait, I didn't get Final Destination rating. Final Destination 5, scale of 1 to 10, I'll give it a... I'll give it an 8. It's a good movie, and 
Fast and Furious 6, I'll give a 7.5. Alright, next up, X-Men Origins Wolverine. I will admit, I actually like this movie. Um, not Deadpool, but in context, Deadpool does work better in this movie. Because the original intention for Deadpool in Origins was going to be, it's the setup, he becomes the Merc with the Mouth in a future movie, which never happened. So I will say, like that, in concept, it's an interesting starting point. And that's all you really have to go off of, so, but I can kind of understand. It was not a great execution. Hugh Jackman's really good in this movie. Uh, if... And if there's going to be any Sabretooth in Deadpool and Wolverine, please let it be Liev Schreiber. Liev Schreiber? Liev? I, I've heard it pronounced a few different ways. So, X-Men Origins Wolverine, I will give it a... You know what? 7 out of 10. Okay. Next up, Furious 7. I love this movie. It is, I think, the best Fast and Furious movie, potentially. It's a great send off for Paul Walker. Right? The the script was not written with the intention of this being a send off to Paul Walker, but good grief, the movie works so well as a send off. Also introduces um one of the best characters in the series in the form of Deckard Shaw played by Jason Statham. And he gets uh maybe the best introduction scene. Uh well he gets not an introduction scene, because he shows up in Fast and Furious 6 post-credits. But for chronologically in the series, his first full scene up to that point, it's a great introduction scene. So, yep. Uh, Furious 7, uh, I'll give it a 9 out of 10. It's a great movie. Next up, The Fate of the Furious. A little bit of a downgrade. But it's still a fun movie. It's got some interesting action sequences. And I know a lot of people hate the idea of Dominic Toretto going rogue. But at the same time, he would only go rogue if he found out he had a son who was being, you know, held hostage by a cyber terrorist. Which is what happens in this movie. So, yeah. I actually like this one. It's nowhere near as good as the previous one. Furious 7 should have been the ending for the series, honestly. But I do like what we've gotten afterwards. Uh, I'll give it a 8 out of 10. It's pretty good. The Unbearable... I watched this last year? The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. This is a fun movie. It's basically Nicolas Cage is an actor, the movie. It was a lot of fun. And Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal are a great comedic duo in this movie. I want to see, look, we have Nicolas Cage showing up in a new Spider-Man series for Amazon. How hard would it be to have a multiversal crossover with Pedro Pascal as Mr. Fantastic? Anyway, getting way off topic there. It's a fun movie. It's a, it's a really funny tribute to Nicolas Cage's career. And so... Yeah, I like the movie. It's a fun movie. But I don't know if I'd ever, you know, just want to watch it on a random day. So I'll give it a 7. No, an 8. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It's pretty fun. Alright, Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw. Okay. Yeah, Jason Statham and The Rock. They're a great comedic duo. Uh, Kevin Hart gets a random cameo in here, which is pretty funny. And uh, Deadpool shows up. So, yeah. It's a fun movie. Few questions left open. The Who is the actual mastermind behind the whole thing? Uh, I, think it's, uh, I think it's Jason Momoa, honestly. We're going to get to his debut in the series in a little bit. Okay, next... No, oh, sorry. Um, Hobbs and Shaw. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It's a pretty fun movie. The Wolverine. I think this is maybe the most underrated X-Men movie, honestly. It's just really good. Um, the location of Japan 
for a Wolverine movie just, I think, was an awesome idea. And it, I think it worked out. I think it's a good one. So I'm going to give it a... I'll give it an 8 out of 10. X-Men First Class. I really am fascinated by the Cold War as a point in history. It's I think it's an underrated point in history. Not a lot of people talk about it nowadays. Um... So, you know, if I can find, you know, if I see a Cold War movie that looks interesting, I'll watch it. That's actually kind of what this is. It's about the Cuban Missile Crisis. It's pretty fun. Um, I will admit, down point for me in this movie, it's going to sound weird, is James McAvoy. I, I don't buy him as Professor X in this movie. Michael Fassbender is immediately believable as Magneto. McAvoy is not believable as Professor X yet. Okay, next up is Days of Future Past. This is where I'm like, okay, yeah, McAvoy is pretty good as Professor X. Sorry, I for, uh, you know, I'll do them back to back because these are kind of a duo. No, they're not kind of a duo; they are a duo. I like this movie. I like time travel, and again, the setting is really cool. So, um, First Class and Days of Future Past, I think they're both really good. I'm going to give both of them an 8.5 out of 10. They're both really good. Fantastic Four. Okay, this is the 2005 one. And it, it's okay. It's fine. Nothing really memorable about it. Uh, Chris Evans is pretty good as the Human Torch, but that's about it. So I'll give the movie a... I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Okay. Um, it's, it's okay. Um, the action was staged well. Um, I don't know. I'm not as big on this movie as everyone is. I really am not as big of a fan of this one as everyone else is. It's a good tribute to Chadwick Boseman and his character in the series. So, but I I don't really know where I fall personally on the whole recast thing. So, I mean, the movie's good. It's better than a lot of other Phase 4 projects, but it's still a 7 out of 10. 7.5. F9 The Fast Saga. John Cena in Fast and Furious. Honestly, it kind of shocks me that it took this long for it to happen. But, I mean, it's a it's a fun idea. Bringing him in as the estranged brother of Dom Toretto is an interesting idea. Uh, one thing that is interesting is that the characterization for John Cena changes completely between F9 and Fast X. So, but I do like the movie, and I do think it's pretty fun. So, seven, um, 7.5 to, se yeah, yeah, would be an eight, but it has a couple of cringy celebrity cameos. Okay, X-Men Apocalypse, the biggest, uh, maybe the biggest disappointment of the X-Men series for me. Another subject that I think is just really interesting to hear about is ancient Egypt. And for me, it just... This movie wastes ancient Egypt. So, yeah, 5 out of 10. Blade, it's a good movie. I'll give it a... It's a decent introduction to the character. But it's just a standard, you know, introduction. So I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Logan, 10 out of 10. This movie is incredible. I mean, I talked about it in my video ranking the X-Men movies I did a while ago. I talked about a bunch of these. So, yeah. Logan is uh, maybe the best Marvel movie ever. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. <laughs> I did not realize what went right from Logan to Ant-Man 3. Um... Any scene which involves Jonathan Majors and Michelle Pfeiffer is incredible. That should have been the whole movie. 
because I do like those two on screen together. And if the whole movie had been that tone between those two characters, it might have been a great movie. Definitely would have been a lot better than the one we got. Um, so, yeah. Mm, I think that Majors and Pfeiffer carry the movie to a, I'll say a 6 out of 10. No, 5.5. They carry it to that point. 2003 Hulk. It's okay. I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. Rise of the Silver Surfer is okay. Uh, it's probably about a 7, to be honest. Uh, Cloud Galactus is weird. Deadpool! Um, ooh, probably an 8 out of 10. It's just a fun movie. Ryan Reynolds is the perfect casting for Deadpool as well. Okay, so next up is Scream 6. I like this movie. The opening is really good. And, well, I mean, obviously, you know I like the movie. I have the poster right back there. The movie itself is really good. Um, the lack of Sydney is really what hurts it. But it does have maybe my favorite sequence in the entire series, which is the Gale attack. And next up is I Know What You Did Last Summer. Mike Franks from NCIS is not who I would have expected to play a slasher villain but it works oh scream the eye scream six um eight out of ten i know what you did last summer i'd say is kevin williamson wrote i know what you did last summer i was disappointed the dude can write some great stuff in horror look at the scream movies so yeah i know what you did last summer is a little bit disappointing I give it a 6 out of 10. Deadpool 2. My, I like Deadpool 2 more than the first one. So, yeah, I'll give Deadpool 2... Um, I'll give Deadpool 2 a 9 out of 10. It's a really good movie. I still know what you did last summer. Mm, it's a little bit weaker. I'll give it a... Give it a... Probably 6 out of 10 as well. Three Amigos. Okay, this is a funny movie. Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, and Martin Short are a great comedic trio. Uh, can we have Chevy Chase show up in Only Murders in the Building Season 3? No, 3 just ended. Season 4, can you please show up? That would be really funny. That, that's what I'm hoping for. So, Three Amigos, it's really funny. I'll give it a 7.5. The Fugitive. Ah, Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones. Really good movie. I really liked it. I'll give it a eight and a half out of ten. Really good. Blade two. I like Blade two. Uh, probably an eight out of ten. No. Eight point five. No, eight point four. It's really good. Slightly better than the first one. Uh, Fantastic Four stick, or Fantastic Four point fifteen. Uh, it's. Eh, it's not great. Uh. 4 out of 10. Uh, Dark Phoenix is a movie. That's really all I can say about it is Dark Phoenix is a movie. And it was a uh, whimper for the X-Men series to end with. I do like the ending with uh, Xavier and Magneto playing chess. I do like that, but that's about the best part of the movie. So, 5 out of 10. The Sign of Four, Sherlock Holmes' Greatest Case. It's okay. It's an older black and white Sherlock Holmes movie. I like it personally. I think it's pretty good. Okay. Next up, Police Academy. Oh, wait, sorry. Uh, Sign of Four. I'll give it a seven and a half. Police Academy Four, Citizens on Patrol. <laughs> Okay, I like Citizens on Patrol. It's a fun movie. It really is. It's just a fun movie. I'm going to give it a... Man, I'm going to give Citizens on Patrol a 7 out of 10. I like the Police Academy movies. The New Mutants. Um, okay, this is the worst X-Men movie. Um, 4.9. 4.9 out of 10 is what I give this. Um, yeah. 
Okay, Into the Spider Verse. Yeah, it took me took me five years to watch Into the Spider Verse. I don't know why. It just took me a while. It's a good movie. It really is. It's a good movie. Eight out of ten. Blade Trinity, not as bad as everyone says it is. Yes, it's awkward how Wesley Snipes uh, is filmed separately from everyone else, but it's still decent. Uh, Ryan Reynolds is probably the best part of the movie. He's funny in the movie. Okay. Police Academy 5, Operation Miami Beach. Again, it's a funny Police Academy movie. I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Oh man, this is a great movie. A great ending to this particular trilogy. Uh, which might be the best MCU trilogy. And maybe the best Marvel trilogy, essentially. It's a great movie. And honestly, I don't really have any issues with it. Uh, ten, maybe, yeah, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. Uh, Minions Rise of Gru. You know, it probably doesn't bode well for Minions Rise of Gru. The fact that... So I actually wrote down everything on some paper as I watched it. It does not bode well for Minions that I remember more about Guardians 3 than Minions 2, and I watched Guardians 3 before. Yeah, um, 5.5 out of 10 for Rise of Gru. Holiday Inn, good movie. Not as good as White Christmas, but it's a good movie. So, 8 out of 10, it's pretty good. Also, where the song White Christmas comes from. Fast X, we <laughs> We go from Holiday Inn to Fast X. Yeah, I love Fast X. It, I know it's not a very popular installment, but it's one of my favorites. I love this movie. Jason Momoa is the series' best villain. Maybe. Um, I'm really excited to see how that cliffhanger gets resolved. Let me know if you guys want a video on me discussing who I think survives the cliffhanger ending. Okay. Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. <laughs> uh -huh, I like this movie. I really do. It's a fun movie. And 8 out of 10. Uh, Abbott and Costello meet the Invisible Man. I think it's pretty good. Not as good as meets Frankenstein, but uh, about the same level of quality. I'll give it a I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, 8 out of 10. Uh, I'm going to still meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. 7.9 out of 10. It's pretty good, but not as good as the other two. I'm going to still meet The Mummy. It's also a pretty fun movie, but not a particular fave. Well, it's a pretty funny movie, so yeah. Uh, 7.9. The Triumph, Sherlock Holmes. Is another one of those older Sherlock Holmes movies, and I will give it a 7 out of 10. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Okay, I like this movie. Is it the best Indiana Jones movie? No, it is not. Is it better than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Yes, it is. Okay, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull isn't actually my least favorite in the series. That's Temple of Doom. I'm just not a big fan of that one. But I do like Dial of Destiny. It has a lot of really good stuff. So, not the best in the series, but definitely not the worst. It's a fun movie. And, um, yeah, I'll give it a... I'll give it a 8 out of 10, I think. Police Academy 6, City Under Siege. Yeah. It's just another great Police Academy movie. Uh, 8 out of 10. John Wick Chapter 4. Um, I mean, I love this movie. 10 out of 10. Great movie. I'm not going to say... I, I really can't say anything without going into spoilers. The movie is just great. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I think No Way Home is better than Spider-Verse. But this is still a really good one, and an improvement over Into the Spider-Verse. Mission Impossible 2. 
Um, it's a good movie. It's a good movie. I will give it a... Oh, wait, I didn't give um, Spider-Verse a rating. Spider-Verse is an 8. And um, Mission Impossible 2, I'll give a 7 out of 10 too. Haunted Mansion Remake. There's some stuff about this movie that I like. It's got a good cast. Uh, Owen Wilson is my favorite part of this movie. He is really funny. So, I'll give Haunted Mansion a, a, little bit of a 7 out of 10. It's a fun movie. Okay, we're approaching the end. Mission Impossible 3. Mission Impossible 3 is a decent movie. And I will give it... I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, I actually did review this movie. If you want to go check that out, you can. And yes, I did watch Five Nights at Freddy's before I watched Oppenheimer. Um, but still, I loved this movie. And I, look, I watched it with my sister. We had a lot of fun. Ready for the sequel. Ready to see more uh, crazy Matthew Lillard. Seriously, give that guy a script where he can play a psychotic character and he excels. Eight Crazy Nights. Uh, one crazy night of watching this movie, and I will uh, probably never watch it again. Three out of ten. I, I did not like this movie. The Hyperions. Um, yeah, it's a good movie. This is one of the, if you don't know, this is one of the Daily Wire movies. I reviewed a couple of their other movies. I reviewed uh, Lady Ballers, Run, Hide, Fight, and Shut In. Hyperions is pretty good, but I would not say it's as good as Shut In. I'll give it a... Give it an 8.7 out of 10. It's a pretty good movie. Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Uh, this is the last movie I saw last year. So, it is, uh, it is interesting. And I am honestly shocked that... This, the ending of Ace Ventura Pet Detective uh, would not be made today. It would not be. It would be uh, cancelled immediately by Hollywood. Um, and, uh, yeah, it would definitely not be made today. Okay, so, Ace Ventura Pet Detective gets an, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. So, top three. Let's see, I think it's gotta be Logan. I gave three, um, I gave three 10 out of 10, so that actually lines up perfectly. Logan, Guardians, John Wick. Um, if I had to order those, I would say it's Guardians at third, John Wick at second, Logan at number one for last year, and Furious 7 at a very close fourth. So there you have it. That is every movie, all 60 movies I watched last year. Um, but yeah. What is your favorite movie you watched last year? Not movies from last year, but that you watched for the first time. Anyway, that's it for this video. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.